Friends, this is the uh, lecture podcast for the Most Holy Trinity to be celebrated this year, June 11th, 2017. I'm on page 189 in your workbook, and I will then begin reading uh, at the bottom of the, that page. The heart of Moses' experience on Mount Sinai is the revelation of God's identity. At this point in the story of the Israelites in the desert, the Israelites need a deeper understanding of God's name and nature to restore their damaged relationship with God. They'd repeatedly rejected Moses and God by their idolatry, most shockingly by their worship of a golden calf. As a result of this grave sin, Moses had broken the stone tablets, in effect annulling the covenant between God and Israel. Now with a new set of tablets, Moses meets God to restore the broken covenant. The encounter with God is mysterious, enshrouded in a cloud, typical of theophanies and manifestations of God. When God somehow appears, there is still something hidden and concealed. Then, from the cloud, God proclaims the divine name, Lord, in Hebrew, uh, Y-H-W-H. A revealed personal name of God's, of Israel's God. In the description that follows, God reveals more about what the name means. The Lord is merciful and gracious, two qualities that are almost synonymous. The first one has a stronger familial meaning. It is related to the Hebrew word for womb, suggesting that a love that a mother has for her child, that God is slow to anger would be a reassuring affirmation to the people who have so often provoked the anger of both Moses and God. The final two qualities, kindness and fidelity, are further assurances that the Lord will remain faithful and steadfast, even though the people are stiff-necked and wicked. When Moses asks God to receive to receive the people again in covenant relationship, we are right to expect God to do so, given that God's very identity almost equivalent to the divine name, is mercy and compassion. The notes to the left of the reading. This is a narrative reading, so it tells a story. Uh, And it does suggest that you use your best uh, storytelling skills. One in the middle there, it it does point out that God speaks here in the third person. uh, It sounds a little strange. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, the mercy, he's speaking about himself. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up to Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people. Yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. So then we'll go on to the next page, on page 190. There's a note at the, at the top to keep in mind. Pause in order to break up separate thoughts, set apart significant statements, or indicate major shifts. Never pause in the middle of a single thought. Your primary guide for pauses is punctuation. 
So that that requires you to uh, to study ahead of time and, and understand the sentence structure. Uh, some t- I, what I hear sometimes is people pausing at the end of a line, and the line is meant to continue. That uh, so that is not uh, the way it should be done. So you need to look. Um, so the commentary at the bottom, the final words of a letter can reveal, can, sorry, can leave the reader with a parting message or summary. These three verses of Paul's second letter to the Corinthians are his concluding words to a community that needed more than one letter to address their multiple wrong beliefs and immoral behaviors. After writing at length about so many problems in the church, Paul signs off with words of exhortation and blessing. First, he urges the Corinthians to rejoice, putting the rest of his imperatives in a positive setting, for the community will need experience will indeed experience joy when they live in accordance with Paul's counsel. The four imperatives that follow are indicative of the ongoing problems in the community, particularly the lack of unity and peaceful relationships. If people take these exhortations to heart, they can expect God's own peace to reign among them. Paul's parting words also include a blessing, asking for God's gracious favor, love, and fellowship, in the Greek koinonia, best understood as communion, to be with the community. As he does elsewhere, Paul uses divine designations that are foundational for our understanding of God as Trinity, Jesus Christ, God, and Holy Spirit. It is fitting on the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity to hear of the grace, love, and communion from God to be poured out on the community at Corinth as well as on all of us. God was, is, and will be the source of peace and unity as Paul envisions. Um, Just a little bit of the commentary about the reading. First of all, it's very short. And he suggests that you pause a little longer at each comma. Uh, For one thing, um, uh, because it's so short, you would kind of have to lengthen it just a little bit. Otherwise, um, it just kind of flies by. And this, and if when we pause, we allow that those words to sink in. So it's fairly straightforward. Um, and uh, on the first part, and the second part, that is a Trinitarian blessing, the grace of our, number one, Lord Jesus Christ, number two, the love of God, that is God the Father, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit, number three. So that's... Um, that's important that you are aware of that as you read it. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. You probably recognize that last uh, blessing at the end that's used during the Mass many times. It's particularly at the beginning. So reading from the, uh, the, the gospel since um, actually before I do that, let me I want to point out to you on, on page 190 to keep in mind, use inflection, that is the high or low pitch of your voice to convey attitude and feeling. A high pitch expresses intensity and excitement. A low pitch expresses sadness, contrition, or solemnity. So uh, you really do need to visit to uh, um, <clears throat> adjust your pitch um, and I will suggest to pretty much all of you that uh, when you, you you need to get some feedback and, and ask ask someone if they can tell that you've that you've shifted your your pitch of your voice because sometimes when we do it ourselves we think we're we, or we are doing it but it's very slight and not really detect detectable so so if um, so you uh, you kind of need to overdo it just a little bit for it to come up, to come across. And now the reading of the Holy Gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish 
but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Thank you all very much, and God bless.